Okay, here I am. This knob is not going to be in my final work. Neither is this, and neither are these low points. Problem with hitting these low points, this is my favorite low point because I think I could drive something right down to about there. Problem with that is, Cortex. If you think of shooting pool, have you shot pool? If you have not shot pool, go shoot pool and come back and watch the rest of this. If you've never shot pool, or if you have shot pool, think about taking the pool ball and mixing up a big batch of plaster of Paris and dipping the pool ball in the plaster of Paris and getting a thick runny layer of plaster of Paris on it, lift it up, let it dry, and dip it in a couple more times to get you a layer of plaster of Paris about that big build up on the pool ball and put it on the table and try and run the table with it. I think what you will discover is no matter how much pool you have played, you do not have an intuitive and perfect grasp of how a pool ball covered in plastic Paris is going to work. Of course, then again, this ain't a pool ball. And this ain't my first rodeo, neither. Now, since I said that, rocks can sense when you get cocky. And something bad is almost bound to happen with this flake. Like not going at all and embarrassing the crap out of me in front of international viewers. But then again, I just come right back at it. Uh, trying to raise that up so that I can do nothing from over here because it's still wrong. But you know what I mean. <clears throat> well, so then the question becomes one of whether I should attempt to grind that a little bit and see if I can run another one down here or whether I should try and hit one from here over there because the two options kind of probably cancel each other out. And in the old days, I would have emailed somebody that knew more about it than me that had never even met me before and asked them. You know, email some guy in California or Wyoming or something and go, hey man, new, new napper need help. We're trying it. Well, okay, so it didn't run all the way down here, but still. I had an interesting experience the other day. A napper that I had never met before and never heard of before, out of the blue. Got word about me from somebody else in another state and contacted me and said, hey, you know, I'm in town, can I come by? And, well, sure, why not? I knew that was likely to happen, but it, I hadn't been embarrassed on this rock, so I thought I should do it. But additionally, uh, my goals were to raise that edge some, and I don't care if that kicks in a little bit as long as it doesn't have, I didn't hit it hard enough. That was a concavity, so I knew it was gonna do that. This was low. But I figured it wouldn't dive in enough if I hit it like I did to hurt anything because I'm nowhere close to my center line. So really, even though that looks like a horrible mistake on my part. It really was totally intentional, hurts nothing, and in fact would be a good thing in many places in the world. Okay? Oh, what was I saying? Oh, anyway, so it was cool to suddenly have your day change and have an after over and hang out and Talk about rocks we have known and loved and, you know, all that stuff. There's a crack or something in there that went funkitated, but oh well. 
I need to be quiet and start working here. Okay, y'all be quiet a second. This is, this is important. It actually really wasn't important. I just want to see if you believe me. And y'all did, you got quiet. Isn't that cool? The coolest thing about napping in a way, other than feeling them legs jump across your hand is, um, it's the instant feedback. You know, like, wonder what'll happen if I do this, and then you do it and you know what happened. You don't have to wait for results. Oh yeah. See, you see how good this material is? Of course, there could be, there could be, um, whatchamacallit, it's concrete pockets inside. But I'm betting that even if there are, that they will not be the big, tough, horrible concrete pockets. They will be the equivalent of veal gristle. No, I have no idea what veal tastes like. I'm not trying to start nothing either, so leave me alone. babbling off this now because I just realized I don't need a tail on this rock. <clears throat> I guess if you wrote a novel about abraders, you could call it a tale of two gritties. Leave me alone. That was an isolation. I mean, I know you think I was just hitting along there, which I was, but I'm trying to get this where I can do something miraculous with it. The problem is it's fairly flat and it goes kind of uphill there, but ah, dang it. Yep. Said it went kind of uphill there. That's where it died. Man, if I say it's raining, take an umbrella. Sure tell when I've taken my meds and when I haven't. Cut off part of that. I really would like to have a box car load of this rock and I'd get rid of everything else I own. Maybe an okay trade. Hinge, hinge, what's gonna happen? We don't know. Oh gee, we cut off part of both of them. This reduction is not going anywhere near as rapidly as it could, but oh well. I can be entertaining or I can be fast, but I can't be both. Um, that was more dangerous than it looked, and when you have your hand, when you have a rock in your hand, it's about that long. It starts. It doesn't have con by convexity. Don't squeeze it. Be careful. When I do my support like this, I may be pinching up here to keep the insnap issue at bay, but I don't pinch hard in the middle. If I've got my hand back here and stuff, I don't. I don't put a triple whammy on this thing where I've got pressure points like this. And I don't even hold it that tight. When I hit that one right there, I'm holding it kind of loose and I just let the rocks weight and the quickness of this smaller step down bopper um, take that flake. Sometimes you can get away with a lot more when you don't hold the rock too tight as long as you know you've got enough mass or back in support or combination 
to uh, to let the flake run. This is kind of an issue to run along here, mainly because this is sort of square. It's more or less perpendicular to that plane. So the ideal thing would be to get rid of some of this and bring it up a little bit into a sharper edge where I can hit on top of it. But this is in a way is almost kind of like that thing I showed you on the other one where I hit on the end of it and bonked the end straight on. But we'll see. Kind of worked. And now the tearing starts a little. These rocks just never improve in the middle. Although, it's still not, not bad. This lighter grade, the lighter grade of the Petronella's amoeba tends to be pretty easy to deal with, comparatively speaking. So much of what I do is opportunistic based upon what I see. I just, far less than, than many nappers. I just play the ball where it lies instead of optimizing anything. I just make a, a, a mental calculation from what I'm seeing, what I can get away with, and then tend to do it if I think it'll work. You can call that laziness, but I think I just have a low tolerance for non-interesting, repetitious, busy work type stuff. So. You know, where some guys can sit around and isolate platforms all day, I would go nuts and run screaming around the neighborhood. And I, I've done that enough times where they don't want me to do it anymore, so I'm trying not to. Yeah. So, see, you know, I just was grinding on and ended up with this. And maybe that'll work, maybe it won't. But it probably will. And the same would hold true on that. That one I hit down a lot more and let, let my fingers do the walking. Flattening. So I can hit this, but well, Hit it anyway. I'm just going to dye that right there, or maybe right there when the when the platform fails. Um, the end of the thing isn't that bad. It just basically crushed. I'm not really sure why that crushed. To tell you the truth, because I I don't really feel like it should have. So for one time. I just caught the edge of it where it wasn't crushed rather than trying to get it good or knock it off and replace it like say the tolerance thing. I do think I should say though, <clears throat> maybe people shouldn't do as I do on in, in regard to that because certainly in many instances the results would be more Mo better, or totally, totally more, uh, more certain and more optimal if I were to prepare better. But I tend to think like, well, if the point's in here somewhere, nothing I do is getting anywhere near the point, then it doesn't overly matter. there's just this constant assessment of what I can handle, what I can do. And is what I can do going to be enough 
based on what I'm leaving myself. Okay, so I'm trying to make a good flake. And I can't really tolerate. If I blow this flake, I can't take it again because that platform's gone. So I'm trying to dress the thing a little bit. And again, okay, so we've got a more or less flat surface here. It's not very strong. It's fairly good flint, so it'll break pretty easily. Big hump that probably should have been gone before I did so much of this other stuff. So I turned the edge, turned the end, turned the corner pretty big time. And I had to put pressure on there, but I have to do it in a careful manner. Fairly thick leg. Could have tried to sink it more, but not bad. And I stop, I stop abrading before it gets as high as I want it, really, so that I can go to a finer abrader and cross grind more, so I'm not taking flakes because I need good platforms. <coughs> Sketchy, but let's see what we can do. It would have been nice to sink that more down into here, but oh well. This is kind of rolling up like that, so I really can knock that down some and raise it up a little more before I take more hits here. And this is in the way of that hit, and that hit needs to be a good one. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this hit obliquely across there and try and cut this out and lower it, which helps me with that. So I'll take a little bitty hit, little bitty hit right here, straight down. Okay, feathering that in. And Lowering that a little bit. That's super weak now, so I've got to raise it back up a little bit. Not too much. Cross grind it. That's kind of in the way of that platform, so I really need to dink that off. more pressure back on here and that's almost a concavity right there so we got kind of an issue so I'll put my finger there but I'm not gonna push and then I do the pressure back a little more and it broke where I said the concavity was where I said I wasn't gonna push actually a portion of the platform let go but I had the pressure on here so it stayed together and so it did undercut and sink that hump quite a bit, which is what the goal was. This is way turned the wrong way to do anything about this. So I just need to go ahead. Knock this off. downward because I wanted it to undercut that step. Why is that not focusing? Thought the light but that that step right right there. I knew I had to get under that. 
So I wanted to sink it enough to where that would not affect the run. Held it together up there and hit downward because that always tends to work better. This is one of those issues right here where I need the platform raised to come off with this, but I still have quite a bit of thickness over here. So it would be nice to, to go ahead and take a flake or two that actually does something over here like that while I'm in the process of trying to turn that edge up to go to the other side because you got a little rock you need to try and multitask and achieve multiple results with each flake if possible. You gotta plan better. So we're gonna just do a little bit of hit on this, but have it go a good ways by making it kind of snappy. And this is sort of a square end again, so I'm gonna go downward with it and hit on the side of it kind of like that. I sort of actually hit it that way and held it together and it ran down. So this is all a lot lower than it was before and I'm, I'm rolling this up. So now that's about all I can do with that. Straight down. And since it's cortexy, keep an eye on that cortexiness and figure out when to start turning it. And the problem is, I'm not confident with this because of the cortex still being up on that. So I'm going to hit from the side and take some of that off. Bulbed out a bunch because that's differential hardness. That white, whitish layer is softer than the other darker layer and it just bulbed out. Okay. I do not do things like everybody else does. <clears throat> and that's why you need to watch a bunch of people and you need to go to nap and get with different people and figure out what you're gonna do because <clears throat> I think I've said this before, but I know one expert, gee whiz, great napper at least, that abrades a lot more than me and I know several that abrade a lot less than me Wish me luck. And either one will work, but all the other variables have to be adapted to whichever you're gonna do. Cause you can't change just one variable and, and end up with the same result. It is totally possible to nap well off thin edges, but not like I do.
So anyway, hopefully you can see that I was doing things differently there. And I was still taking some flakes that were pretty decent flakes, but and they were running, but they were not they were not running as in my opinion as reliably as when I abraid. And of course part of that is my lack of experience with never abrading. Um, but also it's just you have to be way more correct, quote unquote, for the conditions when you don't abrade. Which is easier to mess up. And it's harder in part to do the, the uh, traditional tool work, the Aboriginal type work, because their abraders were not this stuff that's way harder than the material being worked. And so that's where you get into the scrunching concept that Marty uses. We try and basically are shearing almost with the hand, with the stone in order to make the edge stand up strongly enough. What I'm basically doing to substitute and what I would basically say is the gist in a way of not abrading, is you, um, oh dang, I've taken a lot of time. Basically, you, you try and get your edge standing up kind of straight. And, um, or you try and, and really support it well and hold it together. Either way, you try and take your flake quickly enough, not, not so quickly that that underbraided edge will blow up, but quickly enough is that if it starts blowing up, it won't blow up until the flake's basically already gone. Um, is kind of the concept. I don't need to finish a point out of this. Y'all know it's under control. So yeah, sorry about the 30 minute video, but didn't notice it had gone that long to reset for another round. Anyway, I feel the orange wearing off, so I'll stop for now. Bye, freeze crack.